Bonjour and welcome to our historical journey through the vibrant tapestry of New England's past. I'm Joris Burman, theologian in residence at the French Church du Saint-Esprit, which was founded here in New York in 1628. And today, we're going to delve into a captivating chapter of US history, the story of the Huguenots in New England. Now, back in the 1600s, a group of French Protestants known as the Huguenots faced severe persecution in their homeland. About 160,000 of them sought refuge elsewhere, making one of the largest exoduses of Europeans. The term refugee was first coined to describe these people. Picture this. From 1562 to 1598, the Kingdom of France was torn by eight wars of religion. These were civil wars that opposed Catholics to Protestants. Communities, villages, families were torn by this division. These terrible wars concluded with the Edict of Nantes, signed by King Henry IV, who was himself a Protestant who converted to Catholicism to become king. The Edict granted religious freedom to the Protestant minority, the first treaty of this kind in Europe, but peace was unfortunately short-lived. And by the late 17th century, King Louis XIV began encroaching on religious liberties. Then came the hammer blow, the revocation of the Edict of Nantes in 1685, stripping away the protections for French Protestants. Can you imagine a population of around 20 millions with roughly a million Protestants, dwindling down to a mere 70,000 due to forced conversions, harassment, and the destruction of their temple, their places of worship. The French Reformed Church organization itself was undermined, leading to its collapse on a larger scale. This traumatic period has left a lasting imprint on the French nation, paving the way as well to the French Revolution a century later. What is surprising is that despite facing unimaginable hardships, most French Protestants remain loyal to their king, hoping for a change in fortunes. Many eventually found solace across the channel and the pond, becoming English subjects and finding a semblance of peace under a Protestant monarch. Now let's talk about their journey to British North America. Did you know that, like most refugees today, their immigration happened in at least two stages. First, fleeing, fleeing France, then making a short stop in England, and for those who were adventurous enough and could afford to travel, settling in the colonies. However, it wasn't easy. With no central agency guiding them, conditions of immigration varied very much with some receiving aid from English committees and others relying on indentured servanthood. The Huguenots eventually made it to America and were a very diverse bunch. From wealthy merchants to struggling refugees, they brought different backgrounds and aspirations with them. And despite their challenges, they were drawn to the promise of a new life in the New World. Fast forward to their arrival in New England. While their numbers were small compared to other immigrant groups, the Huguenot made their mark. In New England, the Huguenot community was small, probably not counting more than 200 people. By 1700, the total Huguenot population in the American colonies was estimated to be about 1,500. Yet, from Salem to Boston, they integrated into existing communities, contributing to the region's economic and cultural fabric. Take Philip English, for example, or Philippe Langlois, before his name was anglicized. 
It came from the Channel Islands. A successful yet contested merchant in Salem, he faced accusations of witchcraft during the trials. Alongside his wife Mary, showcasing the tensions of the time, the envy, but also the xenophobia of fellow settlers. Huguenot refugees also attempted twice to settle rural communities in New England, in Oxford and in Narragansett. But these rural communities faced challenges and eventually collapsed as early as the 1690s. Most of the settlers integrated then into existing communities in Boston or New York City. Most of them formed a cohesive community in Boston, where they received support from both secular and religious authorities. In this New England society, which was quite homogeneous culturally and religiously since the Puritan times, Huguenot ministers like Ezekiel Carey influenced broader discussions on Christian charity and community. Huguenots were close enough to the Puritans not to create repulsion, but strange enough to challenge what they thought the Massachusetts Bay Colony was called to be. Overall, the Huguenots assimilated into New England society over two generations, contributing to the region's cultural, economic, and political landscape. Here are some of these prominent New England Huguenots. They participated in colonial politics and economic activities, eventually joining other denominations and integrated into Boston's English political and religious culture. But assimilation wasn't without its complexities. Over time, Huguenots became integral part of the colonial landscape, also participating in the transatlantic slave trade and benefiting from it. Their story compels us to confront uncomfortable truth about the past. Being or having been a persecuted minority doesn't make us immune to ever being an oppressor ourselves. So what can we learn today from the Huguenots and this important part of American history? Their resilience, their contributions and their struggles offer valuable lessons as we navigate our own challenging times. Their assimilations reflect the resilience of refugees and their ability to adapt to their adopted homeland. It also invites us to reflect on how the United States and any other country can be more welcoming to differences, not only by embracing the contribution of diverse communities as various cultural contents, but also by welcoming how they renew the very fabric of intercultural belonging. Thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in more videos about the history of the Huguenots and the church, just subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much and à bientôt.